Hello students. In this video, I will explain you about the separation of mixtures. Separation of mixture depends on the nature of its constituents. We can separate the constituent of mixture that is either homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture by various processes like filtration, evaporation, sublimation, centrifugation, chromatography, distillation, fractional distillation, crystallization, hand picking method, magnetic separation, separating funnel, sieving, sedimentation and decantation. So these are some of the physical methods by which we can separate the mixtures from one another. Now let us discuss one by one all the methods. First one is the filtration method. Filtration method is used to separate heterogeneous mixture composed of solids and liquids. Liquid passes through leaving the solid in the filter paper. See, you can see in the diagram that whenever insoluble solid is mixed in the liquid, you can see that this is the insoluble solid mixed in the liquid. And how we will separate this insoluble solid by the filtration. In this, we will use the conical flask. In this, we will add the filter paper with the glass funnel. We will attach this filter paper here and we will just pour this solution in the conical flask. What we will observe that after some time, all the solute that is insoluble solid get remained in the filter paper only and the water will be just passed on leaving the solid portion behind. Why? Because the solid particle size is large enough that it cannot pass through the pores of the filter paper. So what will happen? Your sol solid will be remained here on the filter paper and your liquid because of the small size it will just pass out and will be collected at the bottom of the conical flask. You can use this filtration method to separate tea leaves to separate from water, wheat flour from water or to separate sand dissolved in water. Now let us discuss next method that is evaporation. Evaporation is used to separate a soluble solid from a liquid. For example, solution of copper sulfate, its crystal dissolve in water to form copper sulfate solution. During evaporation, the water evaporates away leaving solid copper sulfate crystals behind. How? You can see the diagram here. We will, what we will do? We will just take the evaporating basin. In this, we will add the copper sulfate solution. What will happen when you will start the heating process? then the water will start evaporating leaving behind the copper sulfate crystals at the bottom and here you will be collecting the crystallized solute that is copper sulfate crystals in this way you will be getting that it is attached with the evaporating basin and after drying you can collect this copper sulfate crystals so in this way you can use this Evaporation method to separate salt from seawater, colored component present in ink, copper sulfate crystals from water as you have seen the diagram. So in this way the evaporation method helps us to separate these soluble solids from the liquid. Next is the sublimation method. Sublimation is generally a process in which a solid changes directly into gaseous state on heating. It is a technique used to separate those solids from mixtures which directly pass to vapor state upon heating and on cooling it converts back to solid. How? Let us check. See, this is the arrangement in which we will be uh, taking the inverted funnel here and you will be taking the china dish in which you will pour the 
material or the mixture you want to separate out suppose if i take ammonium chloride and salt this is a mixture and we will take this in the china dish what we will do after this setup that inverted funnel and cotton plug we will put here so that nothing will be uh, goes out from there so that is why we are making this arrangement and after some time when heating is done then we will be seeing that the ammonium chloride is actually a sublimate that means it will sublime it will convert from solid to vapors as you can see the vapors coming out from this salt and the salt will remain here only so ammonium chloride vapors will be collected here and it will be collected at the side walls of this inverted funnel so that will be solidified ammonium chloride and in this way you can see that your ammonium chloride present with the salt get collected at the top of the funnel whereas the salt is getting behind and in this way you can separate out both the mixture this separation of sublimation technique can be used to separate camphor from sand ammonium chloride from salt even naphthalene from salt here camphor ammonium chloride naphthalene all are showing the property of sublimation that means whenever heating is done these will just evaporate and get uh, collected at the side walls of the funnel now next technique is the centrifugation technique in this mixture which cannot be separated by filtration can be separated by centrifugation technique because many uh, solutions are there which are homogeneously mixed together you can see the diagram here that it is a diagram of that a solution of blood that means it is looking as a homogeneous mixture now if you think that you can separate these plasma wbc rbc present in the blood through filtration no it cannot be done that is why we are using an alternative of this method that is centrifugation method in this process separation of insoluble material from a liquid is done where filtration process fails this process is based on the principle that denser particles are forced to collect at the bottom whereas the lighter particles stay at the top when spun rapidly how just see in this diagram if you take a sample of blood in the centrifugation machine then here you will you, you will be getting the arrangement to put this separating funnel sorry a centrifugate uh, tube in this chamber and what you will do when this it is rotated okay it is rotated then what will happen this test tube along with it will also rotate and due to this continuous movement that is rotation what will happen the lighter particles will be collected at the bottom and the denser one sorry denser particle collected at the bottom whereas the lighter particles get collected at the top so in this way you will be getting the layers of different different components and in this way you can separate the mixtures present in the solution it is used in diagnostic lab for blood and urine test used in dairies to separate milk and cream used in washing machine also to squeeze water from the wet clothes even to separate cream from milk that is also used next is the separation technique called chromatography it is a process of separating components of a mixture in this technique the mixture is dissolved in a substance called the mobile phase and it carries it through a second substance that is called as stationary phase that means this technique is using two type of phases one is your mobile phase which is actually moving and other one is a stationary phase which is is not moving now 
the different components travel through the stationary phase at their speeds causing them to separate from one another nature of mobile and stationary phases determines which substance will travel faster and which will travel slow this distance or difference between the travel time is called as retention time now how it is done let us see suppose if i want to extract the or i want to have the components of the spinach leaves then i can take that spinach leaves and i should grind them and take a spot of or a few drops of this extract on this chromatography paper and i will put that spot here and make a line where i have put the spot after putting the spot i will just take this chromatography paper and put in the chromatographic chamber now i will add this i will hang this paper along with the strip and i will just pour acetone because here the acetone is a mobile phase now in this mobile phase it will actually mobile that means it will move so it will move along with the filter paper uh, uh, along with the chromatographic paper and along with this chromatographic paper mobile phase will be moving on it and keeping this spot also along with it now this chromatography paper is a stationary phase and it will allow this mobile phase to run over now what will happen after some time you will be seeing that a varieties of spot will be observed whereas i have put only one spot but after some time i will be getting varieties of spot collected at the chromatographic paper this is the technique of separating the different components present in this spot that is of a uh, leaf extract spinach leaf extract and i will be getting chlorophyll a chlorophyll b anthocyanin carotenoids xanthophylls carotenoids so these drops i am getting in the form of different components present in the leaf extract this technique is used to separate colored components of dyes colored components present in spinach leaves and colored components present in ink can be separated out like this now let us see an another technique known as distillation it is a process of separating one substance from another by evaporation followed by condensation so in this method two processes takes place one is evaporation and it is followed by condensation this distillation is also known as simple distillation why because here the mixture containing two miscible liquids boil without decomposition and has sufficient differences between their boiling points that means above 25 degree celsius boiling points they are having now what about the boiling point below 25 degree that will be called as fractional distillation which we will learn after this now what happens in simple distillation it is a simple technique in which if we want to separate the salt from the water then we will take the sea water in this round bottom flask and what we will do we will just heat this solution whenever this solution will be heated it will reach to the boiling point suppose the boiling point of water is 100 degree celsius then what will happen at 100 degree the water will start evaporating then we will be collecting the vapors here this vapor will be passed through the condenser so that the vapors will be cooled out and collected as the liquid drops in the another beaker so in this way you will be getting the salt left behind and water will be collected as in this test tube or beaker 
so in this way you can easily separate the acetone from water salt from water or any other liquid also you can separate that means they are two miscible liquids miscible liquids are those in which you can see that both are soluble in each other mixed in each other thoroughly next is the fractional distillation fractional distillation as i have told you that this type of technique is used when the two liquids are having their boiling point differences less than 25 degrees celsius so this type of fractional distillation will be used what happens in this here the arrangement is similar with that of the simple distillation only the difference is that it is having a fractionating column attached with the apparatus that is brown bottom flask here we will take the sample which we want to separate out suppose if i take the mixture of ethanol propanol and butanol then what will happen if i heat this mixture now the mixture will start boiling first of all as we know that the boiling point of the ethanol is 66 degrees celsius then it will first start boiling and it will convert into vapors as soon as 60 degree temperature is achieved the thermometer will show us and we will be getting that this ethanol will be collected as the vapors and it will be passed through the condenser where it will just condensed the vapors into liquid and here we will be getting the ethanol similarly along with the ethanol propanol will also start moving or boiling why because as soon as 60 degree celsius is acquired soon the 77 degree celsius will be there but due to the less difference in this boiling point the fractionating column will not allow the propanol to move along with the ethanol why because this fractionating column with this glass tubes will actually just cool down the temperature of this propanol due to which the boiling of propanol will occur and simultaneously it will condensed again back to the liquid or in the mixture again what will happen it will reach 77 degree or more than that that is 80 degree at this stage this propanol will start boiling and converting into the vapors and here again the process will be same it will be con condensed here and it will be collected in another beaker simultaneously it will be followed by butanol because as soon as 77 degree or 80 degree is achieved it will butanol will also start boiling but again it will just get back to the mixture because it will be cooled down by this fractionating columns and after the separation of propanol this butanol will boiled off converted into vapors and collected in the condenser and will be separate out so in this way we can separate the mixture containing the less uh, the boiling point differences less than 25 degree if you want to separate the crude oil similar method is used for this also now let us check how the gases are separated using the fractionating column from the mixture in this method we will take the air and we will filter it so that the dust will be removed out then it will be compressed by increasing the pressure due to the increase in the pressure what will happen the temperature of air will rise up and it is controlled by condenser why because we do not want the temperature to be increased right now that is why we will just cool the air so that its temperature gets below the temperature what is achieved now this cold compressed air is cooled so that its liquefaction takes place at this stage co2 gets solidified at minus 78 degree celsius and we will tell this 
solidified CO2 as a dry ice because it is nothing but the solid CO2 gas. It was a gas, now it becomes solid. By decreasing the temperature, we can achieve this point that is minus 78 degree and we will be getting solid CO2. Now, this air which is cooled is sent in the expansion jet where this air achieves a temperature of minus 200 degree Celsius. See, you can see that the temperature is lower down. It is not high. It is always lower down. It is cooled by condenser for the liquefaction because the gases when they are uh, compressed, they will be converted into liquid and if they are compressed more, they will be converted into solid and that is why you are get, getting at this stage solid CO2. Now, the air is achieving a temperature of minus 200 degrees Celsius. That means you can see here that this is the minus 200 degrees Celsius. That means the air was on above this and when it is just liquefied or uh, we can say the temperature is cooled, it is lower backed and from 0 degree to this 90, minus 90, minus 100, minus 180 degree, minus 183, minus 186, minus 190, 196, minus 200 degree. So in this way, the air is actually cooled down so that it is achieving now the temperature of minus 200 degree Celsius. Why it is done? Because the liquid air is achieving this temperature as to separate this nitrogen which is boiling at minus 196 degrees Celsius. Argon will boil up my minus 186 degrees Celsius whereas your oxygen will boil out at minus 183 degrees Celsius. That is why to achieve this minus temperature we must lower down the temperature up to 200 degree. Now at this stage the opposite thing will occur. What? We have to warm up the air that is liquid air. As soon as we will warm up this liquid air slowly in the fractionating column what we will observe that as, as soon as it achieves a minus 196 degree Celsius nitrogen gas will be moved out and as soon as the temperature is more is achieving more then what will happen argon at minus 186 degree Celsius will go out and at last by achieving minus 183 degree Celsius oxygen will get separated out so in this way you can see that in the fractionating column on the basis of their boiling point they will be separated out one by one so this is very helpful for knowing the fractionating column function to separate the gases also from the air in the form of liquid. Now let us learn about the next technique that is crystallization. Crystals are the purest form of a substance having the definite geometrical shapes. The process by which a impure compound is converted into its crystal is called as crystallization. In this technique we will be seeing that it is used basically for the purification of solids. This process is based on the principle where the crystal forms it tends to exclude the impurities which remain in the solution. That means whenever you will heat the solution the, temp the crystal will be just separated out and the impurities will be taken along with the solvent or solution. Now let us see how it happens. If we take the impure solid dissolved in the solvent, you will be seeing that we are stirring it so that it will get dissolved. Now we will just heat it in taking in the evaporating basin. What will happen? The water will be evaporated along with the impurities and after evaporation complete evaporation water will be separated out and here you will be getting the pure crystals of the solid and when you will dry up this crystals 
you will be getting you will be getting the dry crystals of whatever the solid you have taken suppose if we see that purification of copper sulfate crystals is there then how we will do we will just take the copper sulfate dissolved in water and we will just heat it what we will observe the copper sulfate crystals will be left behind and the impurities will be taken out by the water and here we will be getting the pure crystals of copper sulfate after some time we will just dry up the crystals and we will be getting the pure dry crystals of copper sulfate this process is also very helpful for the purification of sea water that is a salt obtained from the sea water also we can separate the sugar crystals dissolved in water or the alum crystals dissolved in the water with the impurities in this way we can use this crystallization method to get the purified crystals next is the hand picking method it is a method to separate the undesirable substances such as small pieces of stones from wheat rice pulses we can use the hand picking method to separate these small pieces of stones and throw away so in this picture you can easily see that how the stones and food grains or pulses we can able to separate it so this is called as hand picking method next is the magnetic separation this is a technique used to separate the magnetic material from the mixture how by using the magnets we can separate the non magnetic material and we will be having the magnetic ones separate on the magnet let us see if we take a mixture of iron and sulfur mixed in a single container then what will happen we will just take the magnet and keep nearer behind nearer to this evaporating dish and what we will see that the iron is getting attached with the magnet whereas the sulfur particles is left behind so in this way you can separate the ma uh, magnetic materials from the non magnetic materials this is called as magnetic separation now next is next is the separating funnel it is used to separate the immiscible liquids because before this technique we have learned that there are two miscible liquids that means whenever the liquids are soluble in each other and they are not forming any layers between them then that will be miscible liquids but here we can see that separating funnel we are using why because to separate the immiscible liquids it will be helpful whenever the two immiscible liquids are mixed in each other suppose oil and water if we talk about you can see that at the bottom whenever the oil and water is mixed the water is get getting collected at the bottom whereas the oil is at the top it is done in such a way because the denser particles get collected at the bottom whereas the light, lighter particles are at the top so by using the separating funnel we can use this funnel and by on of the tap what we will do we will just control the this solution to come here in the beaker whenever we will just on this tap what will happen the layer which is formed at the lower part will be collected in this beaker suppose in case of oil and water if we talk then the water will be at the bottom so we will just on it we will be collecting the water here and whenever this layer reach here we will stop this tap and we will be getting this oil layer in this separating funnel only it will be helpful to separate the chloroform and water benzene and water even for the kerosene oil and water we will use the separating funnel to just separate these two immiscible liquids so here the quality is that they will be forming a layer this layer is very important because it will allow us that which solid uh, which liquid we should just separate out
and up to wave. Now, our next technique is sieving and sedimentation followed by decantation. Sieving as you have already learned in the previous classes that it is a technique by which we use to separate the minute particles of different sizes passing through a sieve. It is a device containing tiny holes and it separates the unwanted material from the wanted elements. Next is the sedimentation and decantation. This process is done when suppose if we take sand and water. You, have, you must have seen that whenever the sand is dissolved in water, you will be seeing that after some time the sand gets collected at the bottom and the water is getting collected at the top in the beaker. So this is called as sedimentation. Why? Because the settling of the solid particles from the solution that will be called as sedimentation. Now what is decantation? When we just decant this water, means pour this water, the sand will be left at the bottom because of the sedimentation and pouring of this liquid water into the another beaker is called as decantation. So this will be helpful for us to get the clear water in another beaker and leaving the sand particles behind in the previous container. So these are some of the techniques which we will use for the separation of mixtures. I hope you must like this video. If you like it, please share it, subscribe it. Thank you.